Hey everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we're delving into the naming world of branched alkanes in organic chemistry. I've got plenty of examples lined up to make it a breeze for you, so let's make this topic clear and easy to understand together. What is an alkane? An alkane is a type of hydrocarbon. It consists entirely of hydrogen and carbon atoms. Alkanes are characterized by single bonds between carbon atoms, forming a linear or branched carbon chain. They are also known as saturated hydrocarbons because they contain the maximum number of hydrogen atoms possible, given their carbon structure. Alkanes serve as the foundational compounds in organic chemistry and are commonly found in natural gas and petroleum. How to name alkanes? Naming alkanes follows a systematic set of rules established by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IUPAC. Here's a step-by-step -step guide. The name of every organic molecule has three parts, prefix plus parent plus suffix. The suffix for alkanes is ane. The first step to name an alkane is to identify the longest carbon chain, which becomes the main or parent chain. Let's take examples. Consider the first molecule, which is a linear alkane. It possesses the longest continuous chain, consisting of five carbon atoms. For the second molecule, it's a branched alkane. This is the longest chain, containing six carbon atoms. When locating the main chain, it does not matter if the chain is straight or has bends. For this molecule, we encounter two chains of equal length, but one is correct while the other is not. How do we choose between them? According to the rule, when faced with two chains of equal length, the determining factor lies in the number of substituents. The guideline is simple. Choose the chain with more substituents. In this molecule, the straight chain possesses one substituent, while the second chain has two substituents attached to it. Following the rule, the second chain is the correct choice due to its higher count of substituents. Step 2. Number the longest carbon chain and give it a parent name. So we start building any systematic name with the parent name, which comes from the longest carbon chain in the molecule. The following table illustrates parent names corresponding to various lengths of carbon chains. Meth means one carbon atom, eth means two carbon atoms, and prop means three carbon atoms, and so on. Let's explore some examples. In this molecule, there are five carbon atoms, and the parent name is pent. Since we are naming alkanes, every structure name will end with ane. Therefore, the alkane name for this structure is pentane. Consider another example. This molecule is a branched alkane. A branched alkane has a side chain or branch, also known as a substituent. When numbering the longest chain in a branched alkane, it's essential to assign the lower number to the first substituent. In this case, we have four carbon atoms in the chain, and the substituent is on carbon-2. Let's explore another molecule. In this case, we're identifying the longest continuous carbon chain, which happens to be a straight one. When numbering this chain, we must assign the lower number to the first substituent, so the numbering must start from the right. Step 3. Name the substituent. Let's revisit the previous example where we've already selected the longest carbon chain and assigned numbers to it. In this molecule, we have two substituents, typically called alkyl groups. The name of an alkyl group is generally based on the number of carbon atoms it contains. Specifically, an alkyl group with one carbon atom is called a methyl group. An alkyl group with two carbon atoms is referred to as an ethyl group. An alkyl group with three carbon atoms is known as a propyl group, and so on. The first substituent is a methyl, and the second one is an ethyl. Step 4. Assemble the name in the following order. Prefixes, parent, and suffix. 
Let's continue with the molecule from the previous example. List the prefixes, alkyl groups, in alphabetical order, preceding each with the number indicating its location. Separate numbers from letters with hyphens. The name for this molecule is 4-ethyl-2-methylheptane. Let's delve into another example. Begin by identifying the longest continuous carbon chain in the compound. The number of carbons in the backbone chain determines the parent name. Next, number the parent chain, starting from the end that provides the lower number to the first branch. In the above example, beginning from either end of the main chain, the first branch occurs at position 2. In this case, whether starting from the left or right, both numberings are correct. Proceed to name the groups attached to the main chain. Here, we have a methyl and another methyl. Finally, assemble the name. When two or more substituents are identical, indicate this using the prefixes di, tri, tetra, and so on. Ensure that each substituent has a corresponding number and use commas to separate numbers from each other. The name for this molecule is 2,3-dimethylbutane. Let's explore another example. Begin by identifying the longest continuous carbon chain in the compound. The number of carbons in the backbone chain determines the parent name. Next, number the parent chain, starting from the end that provides the lower number for the initial branch. In this instance, beginning from either end of the main chain, the first branch emerges at position 2. Regardless of whether we start from the left or right, both numbering options are correct. Proceed to name the groups attached to the main chain. Here, we encounter three methyl groups, the first on carbon 2, the second on carbon 3, and the third on carbon 4. Finally, assemble the name. When there are two or more identical substituents, denote this using prefixes like di, tri, tetra, and so on. Ensure each substituent is assigned a corresponding number. and use commas to separate numbers from each other. The name for this molecule is 2,3,4-trimethylpentane. As the video comes to an end, I present a variety of illustrative examples designed for your practical application. Engaging in these exercises is not just about finding solutions. It's about deepening your understanding through practice. I wholeheartedly urge you to immerse yourself in solving them thoughtfully and then sharing your detailed responses in the comment section below. Your active participation allows me the opportunity to thoroughly review your answers, providing not only corrections, but also valuable and constructive feedback. Remember, practice is key to achieving a profound understanding of the material please feel free to take part in this interactive learning experience.